Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today I want to develop a closed form expression for the following integral. Um, you can see it's going to be a function of a and b. So we just set f of a and uh, b equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of a squared plus x squared over b squared plus x squared dx. And now it's easy to see that um, at the bounds, um, this this integral will go to zero. The expression inside the integral goes to zero um, in both cases. So this, this integral will converge. Um, and that's interesting because we could split this up into two separate integrals, both of which would diverge. Um, but the combination of the two uh, makes it so that the entire thing converges. So this thing will converge. So we're going to go ahead and see what it is. All right. So first we're going to consider the case when A is equal to B. Um, and if you do that, you get the following expression. F of B comma B is just equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of something over something else. That's just going to be natural log one, which is of course zero. So f of b comma b is equal to zero and we'll be using that later on in the video all right now um to find our f of a and, and b we're going to compute its partial derivative with respect to a all right and then we'll use differentiation under the integral sign um to find that the partial with respect to a of our function of a and b is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of 2a over a squared plus x squared integrated with respect to x. That integral easily evaluates to pi. So our partial with respect to a of our function of a and b is equal to pi. Okay. Now we're going to recover f of a and b from its partial derivative just by integrating with respect to the um, variable that we differentiated with respect to. So we have f of a and b is equal to the integral of the partial with respect to a of f of a and b uh, integrated with respect to a. So you can see that will be f of a and b because our partial with respect to a and our integral will cancel out. Um, but don't forget, the partial with respect to a of f of a and b was just pi. So that's equal to the integral of pi uh, dA, which is pi a. Now, this part would be confusing to somebody who has only gotten as far as calculus 1. This is actually our constant of integration. In this case, is going to be an arbitrary function of b. Because don't forget, we started with a function of a and b. So um, it has to have a's and b's in it it's dependent on a and b so we let our quote unquote constant of integration be an arbitrary function of b any function of b and we're going to have to find out what that function of b is using the fact that f of b comma b is equal to zero and i'll show you how we do that okay we previously determined the boundary condition that f of b comma b is equal to zero so f of b comma b is equal to, don't forget, this is our f of a comma b right here. So we replace all a's with a b. So f of b and b is equal to pi b plus g of b, but it's also equal to zero. Don't forget, f of b comma b is equal to zero. And from that equality, you can see that g of b is going to be equal to negative pi b. So we are done. Our, uh, we, we just substitute g of b back into our uh, expression for f of a and b right here. We just found g of b to be negative pi b. So we substitute that back in and we have our answer. So f of a and b, which don't forget, started with this integral up here. So that integral evaluates to exactly pi times quantity a minus b. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.